I want to follow up real quick on the new California law, which requires children in public and private schools to be vaccinated against 10 different illnesses and eliminates an exemption based on the personal or religious beliefs of the parents. So mandatory vaccination in California for public and private school attendance is not new. That part has been around for quite a while. The new part is you used to be able to get an exemption for personal or religious reasons, which you are no longer allowed to do. Numerous lawsuits being filed in California over this. And a few days ago, a federal judge refused to block the new vaccination law saying, and this is Judge Dana Sabra of San Diego, saying society has a compelling interest in fighting the spread of contagious diseases through mandatory vaccination of school age children. The right to practice your religion is not something that outweighs the state's interest in public health and safety. This is a win. This law was prompted by a measles outbreak two years ago, which was traced to some kids at Disneyland who had not been vaccinated. The law was implemented last month. This makes California one of three states. Interestingly enough, California, the liberal bastion, Mississippi and West Virginia are the other two states that have these mandatory school child vaccination laws. It makes California one of three states to require school children to be vaccinated. I agree with this completely. The one thing I wonder when I hear the story is what is the time frame of this happening? You know, they can they can move to keep vaccination on a on a high level, but they can't go move to get the Zika virus, uh, you know, vaccines out there is I don't know. I, I just I'm just wonder, you know, did this happen overnight or is this a long term? And at the same time, do they have the same power to actually to do this for things that are relevant? Well, I think that there's sort of two separate issues here. One is as far as the power of enforcing this. And as we've mentioned, you are only required to provide proof of vaccination in kindergarten and in seventh grade, which means that if you move into this district in first grade, you would not be required to provide proof of vaccination until seventh grade. So you're sort of getting at First of all, the logistics of the implementation of the law, which many people have talked about. But there's the other element I think you're getting at, which is this is a law which seeks to sort of Im put in some bureaucratic requirement to ensure vaccination in some areas. But meanwhile, we seem to be having a problem effectively dealing with Zika. Is that sort of the point you're talking about? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, legitimate point. I think it's it's sort of uh, the passing of this law does not directly impact the research that is being done with Zika. So I think that the, the sort of we can walk and chew gum at the same time type of thing. This is one person walking and then a different person chewing gum. So I do think that we can work on both things uh, in, in parallel. And the the anti vaccine movement continues to exist among both of those areas. We see the anti vax movement getting involved in the Zika research and we see the anti vax movement obviously overwhelmingly involved in what's going on with California vaccination. Really great piece, by the way, by former segment producer and intern Sam Miller on our YouTube channel called anti vaxxers have been around as long as vaccines. Take a look at that to really understand the history of the anti vaccine movement. This decision in federal court in California, uh, absolutely a win. We will take a break and be back with Thomas Frank next.